Our next guest making his first appearance on this show is somebody who has been in the Olympics, somebody who has won a Super Bowl. There's nobody ever else in the history of the NFL who has done that. And um, he's now an author, A Father's Code and a Son's Path, uh, a man who's been in the NFL since 2012. is a six-round selection by the New England Patriots. But now with the New York football giants, he is Nate Ebner. How are you, Nate? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Mitch. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure to meet you right now. What what is uh what is going on in your world right now? Middle uh week before Memorial Day with you getting ready for a twenty twenty one season with the New York Giants. Right. Obviously the book release was that's been huge, but um yeah, really uh just out training in uh, Chula Vista, California, just south of San Diego. Um getting ready to kind of prepare for this last stretch before uh the Olympic team selection is, is made. And uh, just grinding away, honestly, that's just kind of how it goes. So I guess trying to trying to make the twenty twenty, I guess twenty twenty one Olympic team right. for rugby is keeping you in shape, football shape, I imagine, yeah. for sure. Yeah, absolutely, right? absolutely. I'm planning on going back to the Giants and everything, you know, squared away there. But uh, you know, they've given me, they've been they've been amazing in this. Uh, whole thing for me, kind of as the Patriots were in 2016. Um, they supported me the entire way and, and are backing me in doing this. So that's been extremely helpful and an ease of mind, you know, as I, as I go do this. But uh, yeah, training and, and I'll be in uh, I'll be in great shape for the football season by the time this is over with. No for, question for sure. But if everything works out for you, uh, where you make the the United States Olympic team for rugby. Um, you'll be over in Tokyo just as training camp opens. And I imagine Joe Judge was part of the staff in 2016 having a front row seat for your uh, opportunity there. And um, that's part of the reason why you you got a coach who's fully on board with you attempting it again. Right, Nate? Yeah, I mean, I think there's some understanding there, right? I mean, he watched everything that went down in, in 2016. And then, you know, I think, Personally, he understands how much that means to me, not only as a kid who grew up playing rugby, but to be able to represent your country, to be able to go to the Olympics once in a lifetime type of stuff there. And he saw what that meant to me. Um, but I think on the other side of it, he saw you know, myself come back into the football season and have a really good season and play really well, and I was, I was really fit. And um, there was no detriment to my game, if you will. I'd say, if anything, it helps me. So... Um, I think with those things and his experience with it, um, you know, it, it makes him understand it this time around. And um, he's always been extremely supportive of me and, and knowing who I am as a rugby player. And, um, you know, that's always going to be part of me. So he's been awesome. Of course, Nate, because, I mean, it, it stands to reason that you'd be a better NFL player after playing at such a high level of rugby. Because when you come back to the NFL, you're wearing pads. You must feel like Superman after that, right? <laughs> I just feel a lot lighter. <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, because... Yeah, all the unnecessary equipment. I mean, you know, growing up playing rugby, I'll never get it. But, it, um, you know, it's part of the game. But, um, man, rugby makes you run. It's just, you know, there's a cardiovascular aspect to that game that is just unlike anything else when it comes to the physical sports. Um, you know, so that piece that I have to get myself ready for, you know, football, you run around for six seconds, maybe eight max, and then you rest for 30. So there's, you know, anyone who thinks it's cardiovascular shape in football just hasn't experienced real cardiovascular, you know, strain. So going through this for months and then transitioning to that puts me in a really good place, you know, from, from that physical standpoint. Plus there, there's about two or three rugby moments in a scrum. I imagine that would be unsportsmanlike conduct in the national football league. Right, Nate? Would you agree with that? <laughs> I don't know, man. I just heard you talking with Derek Henry. I think he'd be just fine in a, in a scrum. But no, <laughs> I, I think, uh, it, it's, uh, you know, the scrum's part of it, but in sevens, it's a little more casual. Um, it's one of those speed lightning games, but yeah, I mean, rugby has its moments, it has its moments, and um, its physicality. But at the at the same time, rugby is really like one on one. You can't afford to have you know eleven guys go tackle the one ball carrier, right? Because they'll just pass it. So you have to be a lot more accurate with your tackling. You have to be a lot better with your defensive shape. You know, you can't just go fly at a guy. So, in in a way, that philosophical view of the game, you know, makes it a little bit safer, a little bit less violent because you have to be so accurate in your tackle. Well, before we get to your book, Nate Ebner of the New York Giants, I think you're hitting on something. So so many people have said, 
you want to take helmet to helmet hits out of football, take the helmets off of guys. So I think you kind of hit on that, but what, uh, what, what do you think of that I don't know. idea, I, Nate? Well, I hear you, but at the same time, you know, we're talking philosophy of the game. I mean, football is a very downhill game. Um, and in a way, you almost need that to protect yourself. A third and one situation with, you know, two back set, I couldn't imagine that fullback lead play without a helmet on. Right. You know what I mean? Um, that would just be crazy to me. There, there are aspects of football that, you know, the, the equipment is there to protect you, and it definitely needs to be there. But there are also aspects of it that give guys this unnecessary, you know, safety net almost that they feel they feel overly protected and they, they fly into things. You know, you got to ask, would you would you run into something like that if you didn't have those pads on? And I promise you, they'd say no a lot of the time. So those types of aspects where, you know, those open field tackles where guys are just flying and dropping their head, those types of things, um, I think that's where, in a way, rugby is, has taught me personally um, how to keep my head out of it. But at the same time, I run down on a lot of kickoffs and have to block you know, protect punt rushes, and, and I'm very thankful for my helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Ebner here on the Rich Eisen Show, entering its 10th season in the National Football League this summer, attempting to make his second U.S. Olympic team for the sport of rugby. And uh, let's talk about your book here, Nate, because nothing's more personal yeah. than writing a book, period, whether it's a novel or something that you have come up with that appears to be highly personal, a father's code and a son's path forward by urban meyer and the, the photograph uh, is of you on the uh screen the there's three photographs uh on the book you as a rugby player you as a football player and i assume that is your father on yep. whose shoulders you are um and so what what what's this book about what what do you want us to know about so we can all get this where all books are now currently yeah. sold nate well ultimately you know it's got the it's got the patriots and the super bowls and the you know, walking on as a, you know, second, third-year guy in college at Ohio State as a true walk-on, didn't play you know, football in high school. Um, you know, that process, what that was like, getting drafted in the Patriots with no high, you know, hardly any football experience. And then the transition through all of that to go back and play rugby in the Olympics. Um, and then, you know, obviously come back and win another Super Bowl with the Patriots. And it, and it goes through that. But ultimately, that is a vessel for the story, which the bigger story is the father-son relationship. You know, unfortunately, I lost my dad in a way no one should lose anyone in their life uh, when I was 19. Um, you know, the last conversation we had was about me walking onto the football team at Ohio State. He didn't get to witness any of that. And, um, you know, I talked about that relationship with me and my father, how close of a bond we had. Um, you know, I put it up against any father-son relationship out there. He was absolutely my foundation best friend and you know losing him and trying to get through that was not only the strength of my mother to help me but just the words and that code that's in the title the father's code of him really even helped me away get over uh, losing him and um, really pushing on to you know make that promise that I told him I'd walk on to the football team and try to get to the NFL you know staying true to that promise and going through anything that got in my way um, through the, you know, the things that he taught me. And it's really, you know, it's a book for people who like sports and definitely rugby, um, but sports in general, obviously football, if you want to hear more about, you know, the Super Bowls and Patriots or whatnot, but it's really anyone who's, who's a parent or has uh, a, a great relationship with their parents. Um, you know, I think, it, it, I think in a way we, we've really lost sight of how to be really good parents uh, nowadays. And I had the best example in the world. And I just, try to shine light on that and I think a lot of people could take a lot from you know how great my dad was was for me and how that allowed me to do amazing things and I'm really just a normal guy who who can grind a little bit because of him so is rugby was your dad's sport is that what yeah yeah he, he got me I mean I've been uh, next to a rugby field since I was six you know six years old I was in a in a, in a cradle thing on the sidelines when I was really a baby. So I've always been around rugby. I played on the junior national teams and whatnot. It was always uh, something that's been a part of my life. But we did everything together. You know, I don't want to, you know, I talk about that in the book. Um, you know, my dad did such a good job of exposing me to so many different things. It just so happened I, I gravitated towards rugby. You know, he loved it for the violence. I loved it kind of for the beauty in a way. I had to share that violence being his son. <laughs> um, you know, 
I, I fell in love with it for my own reasons, and it was something we shared together. But we did everything together, so, you know, obviously I get into that in the book. But. Well, I mean, the fact that you have now come up with a book to, to um, communicate your love for your father um, is just another method to do it. Obviously, you playing the sport in the manner in which you do um, is a testament to that love, and I, I, you, you had me at hello, essentially, with this, Nate. Um, it's beautiful. There's no other way to put it. And and I'm I'm wondering, you know, who have been the father figures in your life since your dad left? Ha, was it um, the coaches? You in know, your, I do it, I do like to also say the book. If I had to sum it up in one sentence, it's just, in my opinion, the greatest love story of all time because it is. And you know, I had my dad up until 19. Um, I was kind of past that building stage in those last couple of years. It was almost like we were best friends. So he really laid the foundation for me, and I just got to share, you know, his time uh, towards the end there as, as a friend. But um, I think we had such a strong bond, there was really no one that would kind of step in and take his place or, you know, really it would just complement the things that he's already said to me. And it kind of affirmed the fact that, yeah, my dad was right in this or, you know, Whatever, hard work, Jim Trestle, Bill Belichick, you know, I mean, I, I knew I was a hard worker. And then when I get to New England and I see you know, what Bill's expectation for work was, I, I had to go up to another level. But I knew I was capable of it because of everything in my past that my dad has really prepared me for in a way. And uh, Bill was just someone who kind of um, brought light on those same things in, in my father's code, if you will, those, those character uh, traits that, you know, Bill wanted to see on young men and, and they kind of they complimented each other very much so i'd have to say yeah jim trussell and, and, and bill belichick were huge in that and obviously joe judge as well congrats on the book nate really it's Thank uh you, very much, man. you know and, and uh, the thing that really you know you didn't say it in this interview but the one thing that struck me i've seen you say before is that you want parents to read it because you want everyone to understand that time is so precious and they should spend time with their children because you never know what they're instilling in somebody and i think that's beautiful and i think everybody should hear that Nate. Thank you. And I just and I just feel that, you know, love is shown through your actions and the time you spend with the, your loved ones really shows right there how much you love them. And um, I think that's the greatest way to you know, build up your build up your children and give them give them confidence and assurance. Well, Nate, let's uh, let's chat, you know, down the road. Um, obviously, you've got the Olympics in front of you and then the, the playing season after that. Let's uh Let's stay in touch. I'd love to follow along and root for you and uh, and check things out as you uh, as you go into your tenth NFL season. Absolutely, I would love that. Thanks so much for having me anyway today, and uh, enjoy the rest of the day. You got it, Nate. Thanks for the call. That's Nate Ebner. Finish strong: a father's code and a son's path. Where all books are sold, that's available now. Where all books are sold. His father, in case you were wondering, at age nineteen. Um, as he was getting set to walk on at Ohio State, he was murdered in a robbery attempt in the family's auto business junkyard. Mm-hmm.